with me and read the scriptures out of 1 John 4, 7 through 10. It said, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is the love, not that we loved, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Father, we are grateful that you made the way in the manger. And Lord, I thank you that it was a way to the cross. Lord, it is just unfathomable that any of us would even lay our lives down for one another. But most of all, it is just unbelievable. And a lot of times as we see the power that you demonstrated through your love in giving your son. And so, Father, as we celebrate this Christmas, may we celebrate the way that you provided for us in the manger. Thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. I guess if we haven't released kids, we will. I saw something in one of the memes that you see on Facebook. It's not what's under the tree, it's who's around the tree. That makes a difference. And it was a Peanuts cartoon, and it had the people standing around the tree. Most of the time we see in this Christmas season, we see most of us as we go through the, everything of our rituals, whatever it is. We all have different family rituals we have, and, and we talked about this in our concert last Wednesday night of what you do with fruitcake, that there are some of you really like fruitcake, so that's fine. My wife likes turnip greens. I have no use for them. Um, but you find yourself in these rituals of Christmas. One of the, the first ritual that we do and one of the main rituals we do at Christmas is we try to get together. We try to. Not every time we can, but we try to get together with family somewhere, somehow. My family, we, we, we usually meet the week before Christmas, the Saturday before Christmas. That's our tradition. It just we find that that's the easiest when my sister and my, my, my two sisters and myself and all our families can get together. That works well for us. You know, it isn't about the gifts because you get to a certain age and you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy your own presents. You know what I mean? And uh, you can find that, and, and you just, it, I, and I still, I love Home Depot and Lowe's this time of year because they have the, those, all those gifts in the middle of the aisle that you didn't know you needed, but you got to have. Those are the wonderful times that you can walk down through there going, oh, man, I can justify this. I will never use it, but I don't have one of these, you know? And you go through there, and you find that at Christmas, most of us have some kind of family tradition or something that we're doing that would make a difference, and we find that it is our happy time in Christmas, the main thing at Christmas, and it's the, this message of today, and that is of love. You know, we give gifts as a demonstration of our love. I'm grateful. You as a church, you give us gifts. You give us, there's been people that's given us gifts, and I am so grateful, and that is expression of love, and I understand that. What I find is that, and I titled this one, The Gift of Love, because when we start talking about the way in the manger, love is truly a gift. It's a gift you both receive and you have to give. A gift that only can be demonstrated when we give. Love is not just an ooey-gooey feelings you get from Hallmark. I've watched plenty of Hallmark movies this time. And I've enjoyed it, to be honest with you. I'll just be honest. And I've, I, I feel like I've got to shave my legs or something. But I, I do. I have enjoyed a few. A few of the Hallmarks have been good. I mean, they bring you back to the simplicity. You know, I mean, it's, it, it really is better than the Die Hard at Christmas, you know, to be honest. I mean, it's, that's the guy Christmas movie is, is John McClane, Die Hard. And so yeah, it's better than that because you find that it gets back to the simplicity. I know when they're going to roll credits is when they kiss at the end. I understand that. Once they kiss, you roll credits. They're, and they messed me up. They had one the other night. Didn't do that. They went to another scene. And I was like, I kind of stood there like a calf at the new gate going, what are they doing? They've messed me up. You find yourself at Christmas that it is about that expression of love. We find that different ways that we can express our love to one another. We try to find that traditional way that we all do, and we want to give those gifts to one another. You want to give that unique thing that maybe that person doesn't have, and, and that's torture for my boys and my family is they don't try to buy me tools because it's like, 
that's great. I got three of those, you know, because uh, tools or something, I just, I, that's, that's my fault. I, I just enjoy them. If I don't use them, I enjoy them. But you find those gift of, the, the gift of love has got to be demonstrated somehow, somehow. If you grew up with somebody that said they loved you but did not treat you well, you did not believe that message. If you grew up with somebody that had an abusive past, and that person would abuse or even verbally abuse, and they say, oh, but I love you. And I always loved mom when she would tell me this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. I never believed her when she was whipping me with a bolo paddle. Not until I had my own kids. And then I believe her now, guys. And I, I know I've probably said that to y'all. It's going to hurt me more than you. I really didn't say that to y'all. I just enjoyed doing it. Um, <laughs> But they always, and they, the worst part was they'd badger me growing up. They'd, they'd say, Mom whips harder than you. And I'm like, well, we'll see about that next time, you know. But I have found that in our life, God wants us to take love that we have received and demonstrate it somewhere. But let me give you one of the steps a lot of times we leave out because in order to receive love, love has to have, let me call it a humble landing pad. Love's not easy to receive. You know, I made it through the offering time without crying. I have cried a little bit as different ones of you come to me and spoke to me, and I've teared up over this week and, and trying to figure out, you know, my own emotions on things. But love is something that to receive love, you've got to have that landing pad of humility somewhere. You will never receive love if you do not have humility because humility is that place of saying that I need this. I need it. Everyone needs to be loved, and if you don't, believe me, go like Jesse. she got a new puppy, you know. A puppy proves there's got to be loved. I love the stories of the puppy rescues, you know, or the dog rescues. And, it, you know, I don't tear up when I'm reading them, but I usually kind of turn away when I'm reading them. And because and, and, I love those because in that need of that puppy in its life, somebody either rescued it or brought it out. I even like ducks when they get caught in a drain and they bring them out, you know, and it brings that tear to your eye because those ducks have received somebody's love. I can't imagine when God was looking at us and looking at mankind in our stinking wretchedness. I mean, if, if we as humans would reach down into a storm drain, and you've seen the video, and bring out ducks, baby ducklings that have gotten in a storm drain, and you bring them out one by one, somebody loved those animals enough, or you, you find that, 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 that and I, I remember seeing this one here recently, a little a mama dog had crawled into a cave that was flooding and pulling her babies out one by one because the flood water was going up so high. She would crawl back in that water and then pull those babies out and the rescuers were getting as quick as they could. And I thought, what love is that? Pales in comparison to what God has done for us. In our wretched state, in that place where we could not help ourselves, God reached down to us through the babe in the manger. He made the way in the manger. He demonstrated his love. He didn't just tell this world, I love you, and leave us in our wretched, stinking path that we were in. Leave us in the storm drain that we got lost in or in that cave that we could not find our way out of. He didn't leave us there. But he reached down through a babe in the manger. And he says, I love you so much. Let me demonstrate my love to you. The most precious thing that I have, I've sent the prophets I've spoken to the prophets and told them, you know, go tell my people that I love them. Go tell my people to serve me. Go tell my people that sin's going to kill you if you don't walk away from it. Go tell them. Every time he sent a prophet, they would stone him. They'd kill him. They'd say, do away with him. As a parable of the vineyard, they said, if we could just get rid of these guys when they came to get the payment, the master of the vineyard sent his servants to get the payment. And finally, he sent his son, and he said, if I just send my son, they'll listen to him. And they thought in their mind, they said, if we would just get rid of this son, then it's all ours. He sent away in a manger. He demonstrated his love, but for us to receive this kind of love, we have to have that humility of heart. And Ephesians tells us this, and I love this passage in Ephesians, the, fourth, the second chapter and the fourth verse. It says, but because of his great love for us, not even for, I mean, it wasn't anything that you did or I did. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, 
made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. He made a way in the manger. In 1 John that I read to you there, it says that for God is love. 1 John, in the fourth chapter, And you'll find that that is an expression of himself. But that expression is not just this love puff sitting in heaven, but it's an expression of who he is sent through his son to a lost and dying world. That's the Christmas message. That's the hope that we have. That's the peace that we have. That's why we have joy. We find that the message was all wrapped up in that God so loved us that he reached down in the stinking, stank, and any other thing, as Grinch would say, of this world. And he said, I love you. And he had to demonstrate that to us. Romans, the fifth chapter, tells us why we're yet sinners. He loved us. Why we're yet so far away. While we were thumbing our nose at God, let me just use this gross expression we see. While we were still using some of the worst gestures of our hand and flipping God off, saying, we don't like you. He sent his son to die for our sins. The most disrespect that we could ever show to God, saying, we've got this, leave us alone. And he says, no, I love you so much, I'm going to make a way. Now, it's your choice of whether you receive this love or not. And that's why I say love demonstrated was love demonstrated thousands of years ago when he sent his son that was his seed, born of the Virgin Mary, that was birthed in that manger in the most humble sense as Larkin has been taking us through the Advent series on Wednesday night. The most humble place that you could find is in a manger with the lowliest of lows. He says, I love you. I'm going to the depth. I'm going to reach as far down into that storm drain to reach any person that I can reach. Nobody's going to be left. While we were yet sinners, he loved us. We read the scripture, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let me tell you this, everyone has, or has, let me just say, has a potential capacity to love. Everyone does, even the hardest of hearts. You saw where Charles Manson just recently died in prison. For those of you that are old enough to remember the ghastly things that he did and things he was inspired with the Nazi cross on his face and with all the murderous things that his, basically his believers and him did. The most ghastly thing, God even died for Charles Manson. I don't think he received that. He didn't have the humble landing pad for that love. Not that I heard of anything. Somebody asked me, just talking to him yesterday as I was talking in, in a theological conversation, and I wasn't feeling too theological, but in some of the theological conversations, one of the things they asked me was, doesn't everybody, because they were asking me about after death, and you get raised up. I said, everybody get raised, gets raised up at the end of time. Everybody does to face judgment. And they said, well, does everybody get another chance? I said, no. Best I can tell in Scripture, they do not. And I said, because I want to tell you, he said, even if they had another chance, would you want to spend eternity with Hitler with an unchanged heart? Would you call that heaven? Who could not stand the love of God? Who didn't want nothing to do with it? He actually grew up around the church. Or could you see those that, and I said, I couldn't imagine spending eternity with people who did not make a way in their heart for that way in the manger. They didn't want it in this life. And as we talk more, they say, well, that does make sense because there are people that are unrepentant, do not want it. God loves us so much that he sent his son because the capacity that we're born with is a God-like love. Every child, we don't have to teach them how to lie and everything else. They actually learn how to do that, to cover themselves, cover their own sins. But every child has capacity to love. But what happens is in that capacity of love, we're either enslaved by our own sin that causes a gross uh, misuse of that kind of love or we're in, in that place where We're wounded, and that capacity of love is actually crippled in our young age. Or else we choose to be that open place for God's love to be enhanced in our life by receiving Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Let me give you a few of the un-parts, and it doesn't have anything to do with the un-cola. 
Let me give you a few parts of this gift of love. First and foremost, understand this gift of love that God has given you is unearned. There's nothing that you can do. The only thing you can do is in hum humility, make an open heart of humility. You cannot work your way into God's love. I remember in my younger days when I would sin, I would try to make up for it with God. I would try to do things and, and try to earn that love back. There's nothing worse. This is almost as bad as when your mama knows you've done wrong and you won't apologize. You just try to do all things right. Now, she'll let you do that all day long because it's good to have the carpet vacuumed and all those things. And finally, at the end of the day, it says, now, do you want to apologize for you did wrong? So that's my suggestion. If kids do that, just let them go ahead and get the carpet done, leaves raked and all those things. They feel like they're paying back. Then let them understand what love is. It's unearned. It's not something that if you've got to earn love, even in your family, you've got people in your family that will withhold love from you because they're wounded or something else. That's their wounds. Love is not something they can have just to hold. Love is not a gift that they can hold on to. If you think you can withhold love because you have a right to, you misunderstand the love of God. Because while we were yet sinners, God did not withhold. Love is unearned. You think, well, if I just do this, this, and this, God will love me more. Ah, gosh, when I was a sinner, he loved me. I'm still a sinner, he loves me. I still have times that I struggle, he loves me. Unearned. That's a gift. How many of us on Christmas tomorrow when you open a gift and you'll open it up and go, man, I worked for this one. Now, we may have. Some of you may have. You put the Jared things all over the place, and, and the, finally the husband gets the hint that it is the diamond that you want, not the toaster. So that might be an earned gift. I don't know. But you find that, that love that God gives us is an unearned thing. And let me tell you, the second thing, the un part is, it's undeserved. You didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. He made a way in the manger when I didn't deserve it, when I deserved to be in that tunnel, when I deserved to be in that dungeon. He made a way. See, a gift that is given is unearned, it's undeserved. And then I tell you one of the other uns, and there's nothing worse, and I, I promise you this, I, I do see things, I watch a lot of news feeds and different things, and, and this one child, that I, it was horrible. I don't know if they were staging it, but mom and dad didn't get them but empty boxes. And they were trying to prove how blessed they were and different things. And that kid went ballistic. He opened up boxes, started throwing boxes at mom, pulled the tree down. I was like, whoo-wee. After a week when they woke up, we would have a nice long talk. But unearned or undeserved, and then the, last, the third one here is unappreciated. God, why haven't you loved me like you should? I didn't get this or I didn't get that. I should have had this or I should have had that. We all have bad things that happen to us in our life and we go, God, this wasn't the way it should have been. I, I should have been. I'm better than this should have happened. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Because he saved me from the depths of my sin. And when I... All I had to do was prepare a landing pad for his love. And when he saved me from the depths of my sin, if I get nothing else from that, nothing else in this life, there are many blessings I've received since then, but if I received nothing else, thank you, Lord. I have escaped hell and destruction that I deserved. He made a way in the manger. A way that was unappreciated a lot of times in my own life, unappreciated in Christian's life, because we start looking in comparison and saying, hey, uh, I know my mom always at Christmas, and I know you as mom and grandmoms, they're all got to be equal. I understand that. I have, and then you got to be able to somehow prove with receipts that it's all equal. I didn't spend any more on this one, even though you think I love that one more than you. I didn't spend any more. My grandmother always gave us that same envelope with that $5 bill in it. We all knew we had it. The picture was the same when you flip it open. That's that same picture. I recognize him. And she couldn't afford to do that. But she wanted to make sure her grandkids had something. Unappreciated most of the time. And let me give you another couple of uns. The next one is unknown to most. 
Do you realize most of the world is looking at this holiday as a secular holiday? Happy holidays. I hope you have fun in Christmas. I hope you have a white Christmas and snow. Happy, 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 happy. Folks, I want to tell you something. It's a joyous time to know he made a way in the manger. Most of the time it's unknown to most even what it's all about. And so we really, in our understanding and what we see, in all the symbols that we have of Christmas, a lot of times we lose the message of Christmas. And then let me tell you the last one here of the uns is that of being unwrapped. The gift of love a lot of times has not been unwrapped in our lives. And I am reminded again of that kid that got empty boxes. Every time he opened another one, opened another one, he finally got mad enough, he pulled the tree down. And that gift of love really wasn't there. And I would dare to say, as I look at those parents, they probably did the best thing they could for that kid. Is to understand that love is a gift. They didn't really, that kid didn't deserve anything before or after. I didn't deserve anything before or after. But I'm so grateful for a God. And now all he's asking us to do is just to receive his love. Make a humble landing pad for the love of God in your life. So when that has been given to you, you have not a, there's not a bit of problems, you giving it out. Because if you ever try to hold on to it, remember, it was given to you as a gift. That's the problem we run into. We become the selfish kids. This is mine. I want this. The last thing I share with you today is that Christmas is the true gift of love delivered to mankind in the message in a manger. I will ask you this question as I read in the first John. I said, this is love, not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son as an atoning, in other words, to take care of our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us, we ought to love one another. In other words, as you have received this gift, understand it is not yours to keep this Christmas season as you stand around your tree it's not about the presence under it's about our presence around make sure everybody standing around your tree knows Jesus Christ make sure everybody that you come across knows that God has provided the gift of love through a way in the manger because when we didn't deserve it his hand reached down into the gutter of our life and it says I love you so much and that blood scarred hand said come that's the message of Christmas. That's the love he has for us. Kim, go ahead and get set. I'm going to pray. We're going to close today in this, this service in a song. Not one you're going to sing. I'm going to have a visual presentation. I want you to hear the message. See the message. But then, if I can use Miss Congeniality, be the message. As you hear this song, and as you just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you, remember, the gift that you've been given is a gift of love you didn't deserve, but yet God gave it to you. Wear it well. Let's pray together. Father, I'm asking you even today as, as we see what you can do, how you can do things in our lives, that you have loved us. There are some folks I've come across in life, Father, that they have not unwrapped this gift of love you've given them. Or had he made a place for it in their heart. And Lord, I pray that every person in here knows Jesus Christ died upon the cross for their sins. That's the whole reason we have a Christmas message. And I ask you, Lord, that we can receive that message even this Christmas. And let a life be changed even here today. If there's anyone here today that does not know Jesus Christ, you can pray a prayer and say, Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. Please forgive me my sins. I know I don't deserve it, but I need you. I'm tired of myself, and I'm tired of being lost. I receive your gift of love today through the forgiveness of the cross of Calvary. Wash away my sins. If you prayed that prayer, please get with me after the service and say, I've prayed this prayer. Let us commit ourselves again in this Christmas season to who he is, the king of all creation that loved us so much that made a way in the manger. In Jesus' name.
Take a moment and collect yourself. God is a good God. What an awesome God. Thank you, Kim. That song was actually, there's another song that's that video. She found that video and put that song with that video. Awesome. God is an awesome God. My heart, as we close the service, my heart is this year we're going to see people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ.